Hello. Today I'm going to walk you through uh, formatting your appellate brief in Microsoft Word. I'm going to be using Microsoft Word 2016 on a Windows computer. So if you have a different version or if you have a Mac, things might look slightly different, but the functionality should all be there. If you're having trouble finding that information, just come and see me. I can help you kind of work through that. We're going to start today with uh, creating a table of contents and using headings in your appellate brief. So we're going to be using the styles menu here. Uh, we're going to be using the references tab over here as well for the actual table of contents. So to start out, we are going to take our first heading here. We see standard review. This is our highest level heading. These are our large sections of the paper. And we are going to make that look the way we want it to look in the actual appellate brief. So right now it's just in all caps, it's over to the left. It's pretty unremarkable. Let's make it stand out a little bit more. Let's center it. Let's make it bold. We'll keep the font the same size, but I think that's that's good enough. So once you have that looking the way you want, you will go up to the styles menu, scroll up to heading one, you will right click, and then update heading one to match selection. You should see that text goes and becomes bold. It comes in Times New Roman 12 point font. So now every other time you create a heading one, it will look just like this. We can see as an example here, here's our next top level heading, the argument section. We highlight that, we click heading one, and it now centers, bolds, all caps. Perfect. It looks exactly like we want it to. Next, we're going to start on our second level headings. So here we have our first second level heading. So this is our first section of the argument. For that, I want an outline form. So I'm going to use um, Roman numerals. So we'll start there. And you'll see Microsoft Word goes ahead and makes it in that outline format, it indents it as the eye. It makes everything look nice so that there's no hanging indents. But I still want this to look a little bit different, so I'm going to add an underline. So I'm going to highlight Control U to underline it. And now that we have that second level heading uh, set up the way we want it to, we can go up to heading two this time, right click, update heading two to match selection. Now we see it's 12 point times new Roman font with the underline and the Roman numeral. So when we go through and we find our next second level heading all the way down here, we can highlight that, click heading two, and we see it's assigned level two, it's underlined, it's all set up with all our indents, everything looks great. All right, moving on to the next one. Here we go, heading three. So there, number three there. And so this section of the brief has subsections. So these are going to be our third level headings. We see there's a heading three. Um, for these, we also want them to be in an outline form because that makes everything easier to track. But I want lowercase letters, so we'll just have A, space, and then it auto corrects it. Because this is a sub-level of three, I want to indent it a little bit further. So I'm going to use this um, small box here and drag that over so that it is one inch indented. So to the little one. And then Let's add something else to make it different. Let's make it italic. So now we have that. We go up. We have that set up the way we want it to. Go to heading three. Right click. Update heading three. So now we have our three heading levels assigned. We can go through. There should be one more third level heading. There it is. Click that. You see it goes to B. It gets moved over. Everything is great with the indents. And then we move down. We can get to our final heading. And we notice this one is all capped. It's a different section. It goes back to heading one. So now we've tagged all of the uh, headings in our paper, which means that we can insert our table of contents. So let's go ahead and add a couple lines here. Go up with heading one, table of contents. All right. Now we will go to references table of contents, custom table of contents. The reason we want to do a custom table of contents is because a lot of times the default options aren't exactly what we need. Uh, so here we see this use hyperlinks instead of page numbers. We don't want that. We want page numbers. Uh, you always want to show the page numbers for your table of contents and you always want to right align those numbers and have a tab leader. I like the dots. You can change if you prefer dashes or a solid line you can do that but I like the dots 
Um, if you have more than three levels of heading, some of you might have four, some might have five, change that level in here. I only have three, so I'll leave it at three, but if I had four, I could click there at four. And then once you've done, once you're done and you've got that all set up, you can click OK. And there we go. We have inserted our table of contents. So we don't need the table of contents heading. People know it's on page one, so you can go ahead and you can delete that. But the important thing now is to make sure that all of these headings look like the headings in the paper. So we go through, we will make them all Times New Roman size 12 because that's the font size and choice for our paper. For heading level one, we will highlight them and make them bold. For level two, highlight and underline. And level three, highlights and italicize. So there we go. That should get you a table of contents. And yeah, it'll update um, when we go through and change some of the page number stuff. I'll show you how to mess with all of that. But for now, it's time to move on to the next video. Thanks.